the sculptor. A seemingly calm and frail character when we first meet him, he rescues Sekiro after his defeat to Genichiro. He also gives Wolf the prosthetic arm, a tool that formerly belonged to the sculptor himself. He spends the rest of his days in the dilapidated temple, carving countless Buddha statues. The reason for this is to atone for his sins from the past. But as it is clear to see, every statue that he carves has the face of wrath, for the carvings reflect his inner self. You may not be able to tell to look at him now, but the sculptor used to be a skilled shinobi. He is known by his nickname of Orangutan. We hear him called this by Emma on several occasions. He is also called Sekijo by Hanbei the Undying, a name given to him by Ishinashina. How do we know this? Because Ishin is the one who first calls Wolf Sekiro, a name which means one-armed wolf. Sekijo itself means one-armed orangutan. Sekiro. His orangutan name came from his years of training in the Sunken Valley Forest, amongst the tall trees, learning to move as fast as the monkeys that dwelled there. Whilst in the Sunken Valley, he trained with another rogue shinobi, called Kingfisher. The two shinobis eventually parted ways, with the sculptor leaving to fight the war for the Ashina clan. Kingfisher, however, had a darker fate. When fighting in the war, Orangutan became known by another name. This is discovered through the description of the Shinobi Axe of the Monkey, where it says, Once the favored weapon of a Shinobi, known as the Bounding Monkey of the Sunken Valley, it was lost along with his left arm. Why and how exactly did the sculptor lose his arm? Well, during his time in the war, he developed a lust for killing. This eventually became out of control. The bloodlust brought him close to becoming Shora, which means to kill solely for the joy of it. Hishin talks about this when we give him monkey booze. <laughs> いや、修羅のごとき者を切ったことがある。それは引退。切り続けた者は This Shora can be seen from Sekiro himself in the darker ending, where we see him kill his mentor, Owl, for no other reason than for the joy of it. To stop the sculptor from becoming Shora, it was Ishin that cut off his arm. The sculptor reveals this to Sekiro himself. It hasn't always been a trouble and violent past for the sculptor, for he has a loyal friend in Emma, who he found as an orphan child many years ago. 
He'll talk about this with Sekiro if offered Dragon Spring Saki. ええ、ずいぶん前に戦場で拾った。戦場。じっと握り飯を睨んできてな。面倒だからくれてやった。そしたら何やらついてきてな。it was Emma's mentor and adoptive father, Dogen, who created the prosthetic arm for Orangutan to replace his lost limb. He became obsessed with the tool, spending all of his time developing new skills for it. This may have distracted him for a time. Deep down, however, both Emma and the sculptor know that the rage from his dark past will always be there. <laughs> His various ways of trying to keep it under control, such as carving the Buddhas or adorning his temple with Ofuda, a type of talisman displayed for protection, can only help for so long. For as we can read in the description of the Shinobi Karma skill, spirit emblems are manifestations of regret. Those regretful of their vile actions are haunted by many spirit emblems. Shinobi who have killed many must go through life carrying the burden of their sins in their hearts. We know that the former owner of the prosthetic arm, the sculptor, did indeed kill many. This is confounded by the descriptions of the sculptor's karma skills, which read, The prosthetic's many small cuts and scars are proof of the countless deaths it's caused. And, blood splattered upon the prosthetic turns to a permanent rust, proof of the user's burden. This shows that Orangutan was always at risk of falling back into his old bloodlust ways. Perhaps carried away by his fascination with perfecting the prosthetic arm and the many skills that he had created for it. And he had indeed begun to master it, along with the many ways it could kill. Even the Master Shinobi Owl recognizes the device when Sekiro faces him in the Harata estate. Eventually the sculptor realizes the path he is heading towards and so ends his Shinobi days. Specifically after creating the Living Force skill, the description of reads, The sculptor retired the Shinobi prosthetic after developing this technique. He'd gone too far, killed too many. The flames of hatred had begun to manifest. All of this meant that one day someone, maybe even Emma herself, would have to stop that rage from appearing once again. Something that the sculptor is desperate to avoid. A slender finger found in the belly of the guardian ape after killing it. Bringing it to the sculptor, he instantly recognizes it as Kingfisher's. He comments on the somber but enjoyable tune that it will make. It brings back memories of his time in the sunken valley with his former shinobi partner. ちれば死ぬる谷で正したすらに賭け飛び刃を交える。そのような修行を重ねた時期猿と瓦のほどには動けるようになったが、修行に飽きるとはわしはこの猿酒を飲んだ。そして、あやつの泣き虫の指
Wearing this ring as you blow the finger whistle will create a somber tune. The weeping voice is full of solitude and beauty, possibly somber enough to temporarily quell a voice of rage. A voice of rage that is about to be awoken. The old hag's prediction of war was true enough. informs the sculptor of this. Something that may just spill his rage onto all of Ashina. For when Sekiro returns from the Divine Realm, the sculptor is gone. Speaking to Fujioka, the info broker, reveals that he stumbled off, muttering about flames. And the charred branches further ahead show that those flames had begun to manifest. Into the Demon of Hatred. The sculptor's hatred for the central forces, along with the many spirit emblems of regret for those he had killed haunting him, had tipped him over the edge. He could no longer keep his rage under control and was consumed by it. Sekiro instantly recognizes the monster when confronting him. Bushido. The one-armed demon, killing anything and everything in its path, even uses the butters that he had carved as a weapon, as they have no other use for him now. The only thing that can calm his rage, albeit temporarily, is the somber tune from Kingfisher's Ring, his former partner. This shows that deep down, there is still some part of the sculptor dwelling within the demon. Even thanks Wolf upon defeating him. Oh as becoming the demon of hatred was the only way the sculptor could die and finally be at peace from his sins. The battle memory confirms this as it reads, A man who failed to become Shora instead becomes a vessel for the flames of hatred. As fate would have it, he was bound stubbornly to this world. It wasn't until he became a demon that he was finally able to depart for the next. This would also explain why the sculptor knows he cannot die from dragon rot when afflicted with it. The old hag confirms that he is finally at rest. Why could the sculptor not die before becoming the demon of hatred? Maybe he consumed the sediment of the rejuvenating waters, the same way Genichiro did. Emma talked about the effect of this briefly. The fact that Dogen studied it in detail suggests the sculptor might have been involved too, as the two were close friends. Whatever the reasons, the sculptor and Sekiro share many similarities, and maybe they are linked in more ways than we realize. Subscribe for more Sekiro, and let the guru know in the comments if you liked the lore video, if you enjoyed it. Maybe I'll do more. Maybe. To perfectly parry this animal, or on the hard mode, you take block damage, gonna remind you of that. So it's done.